I said to my sorrow that last week's program I mentioned on the gift of the Holy Spirit only attracted uh, some 27 views on our YouTube channel. But I still think that the way in which we live our Christian lives is a good way of spending pandemic time. Be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect, said our Lord to his disciples, but he didn't tell us exactly how to be perfect. But if we contemplate what he can tell us through his spirit in those gifts, which I talked about last week, we may acquire not just the beginning of all wisdom, but all truth as well. We do not live our lives in a vacuum. We live them as uh, in an intellectual and social context, which require us to make choices or refrain from them and to think about them. For they are choices which not only affect our earthly destiny, but our spiritual one as well. For to take the promises of Christianity seriously, we have to believe that we are not ruled by fate or chance or a kind of Darwinian inevitability, but by God's providence and our considered response to his promises. And so we turn to those seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of God. You may be happy to learn that I'm leaving fortitude, piety, and fear of, fear of God for next week. Last week, I suggested that we could very easily confuse four of them, wisdom, understanding, counsel, and knowledge, as sharing at least some of the same qualities as each other. It's important, though, that we put aside any preconceived ideas we may have of all these terms as we use them in our daily lives. We should consider instead, however superficially, what Christian apologists have come to mean by those definitions. In those meanings, we can begin to glimpse what the exercise of these gifts, however imperfectly, can mean for our acquisition of Christian virtue. The Christian apologist par excellence is, of course, St Thomas Aquinas. It would be wrong in any talk on the gifts of the Holy Spirit not to use his insights as a basis for our reflection on them. Aquinas uses wisdom to mean the knowledge of and judgment about divine things and the ability to judge and direct human affairs according to divine truth. It is the ability to contemplate them, not in the short context of human standards, but in the much longer perspective of the divine imperative. Be still and know that I'm God, might be its motto. And so we are on the way to acquiring the second gift of the Holy Spirit, understanding. Understanding is penetrating insight into the very heart of things, especially those truths that are necessary for our eternal salvation. We must pray for the gift of understanding when we contemplate the mystery, for example, of those items in the Christian creeds, which seem out of date or out of fashion or incomprehensible. The gift of understanding helps us to try to see things intuitively through God's eyes, so far as that is possible. Things such as prayer or the meaning of the Bible or the teachings of the church. This knowledge does not depend on human logic or reason for comprehension. It is an essential element of that faith we acquire when we surrender ourselves to its influence. Counsel allows us to be directed by God in matters for our salvation. It allows us in anxiety or not knowing what is right to be guided by the Holy Spirit into good judgment as to the merits or demerits of a particular course of action. 
is an essential part of anyone's job, who is tasked with giving advice or the deliberation of important decisions. And I pray, may the blessing of Almighty God rest upon your councils, says the Queen at the end of the Queen's speech at the State Opening of Parliament, and in an increasingly rare reference to the workings of the Holy Spirit in the deliberations of her House of Lords. And lastly, knowledge. The ability to judge properly about matters of faith and right action, so as to never wander from the path of justice. This is not the gift of knowledge for the sake of knowledge, but the gift of the Spirit to enable us to read and understand events and human behaviour and souls, not on the rather dry acquisition of facts, but an intuitive understanding of what makes people and the affairs of humankind tick. The supreme characteristic of Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry, from whom all these gifts come in the first place. In so many ways, it is better to think about these gifts rather than speak of them. But that thought needs urgency and commitment. Pray earnestly for the gift of the Holy Spirit, says the Bishop at Deaconings and Priestings. And so I pray that you, in considering these short brief words of mine, might by your thought, thought urgency and commitment, begin to live the Christian life, guided by the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.